Hi guys. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, today I thought I might fill you in on what happened in my last pregnancy slash birth. How I'm feeling today, up to date, and what I'm apprehensive and nervous for giving birth the second time. I'm doing this because I just watched Billy Fairs and Sam Fairs Mummy Diaries. Um, and I just thought, oh, I could talk about that. Something I know, something I'm comfortable with. Um, and I find it really fascinating. I thought, did anyone else watch it? If you did watch it, let me know what you thought about it below. I personally loved it, but I don't know whether it's just because I'm a mum and I'm pretty much going through that sort of transition the same as Sam and um, I just cried my eyes out number one and I just thought there was a lot of like drama last time about Gaynor the nan and I thought this time she was really sweet like I know people people didn't like the, the fact that she was like she didn't want to play the games but that's her beliefs and that's that's what she's and I thought it was quite respectful of Sam to just be like because that's what you have to do when you have a family you have to just be like um, okay guys let's just not do it because Kane is not comfortable with that and shut it down I thought that was really good for her baby shower um, so I enjoyed that um, it made me very very nervous because like the whole I love the idea of the home birth and it sort of did make me think like could I do it um, and I really don't know I'm still like I'm only 25 26 weeks now or I don't know 26 weeks I suppose I'm in now and um, so I don't really have to think about it yet but you know what this time around to last time like I felt like last time I was constantly having midwife appointments constantly being told what's right and wrong constantly being told to do certain things and count the kicks and everything like this and this time around like no one's been telling me that it's like <laughs> no one really cares this time around and so I'm like kind of forgetting I'm even pregnant. I don't know whether it's anyone else out there or the mums, even dads, thinking like, well, it happens the second time. It's sort of like been there, done that a little bit. And the midwife appointments, they get, they get shorter and there's less of them. I mean, I haven't had one for weeks and weeks now and I'm not going to have one till another three weeks. And it just seems a bit crazy, like, I want to know if things going okay. I, I like to have reassurance. And my mind just like goes crazy as well because last time with Ella, she was moving constantly. Always moving. I could literally feel her. I'd be like, oh, she's awake. Um, and this time, this new baby is very calm, hopefully. Um, but I just think it's just blowing my mind a bit how it's everything's so different even like your friends and stuff like when you've done it once it's like oh it's kind of done now um i'm just forgetting it's even happening to be honest and i don't know whether that's just like my way of dealing with it <laughs> but you're just like you're chasing after a toddler too so yeah i thought that was really sweet i thought it was really sweet when sam was crying over having to spread her love but once someone once told me you don't you don't half your love and separate it to your kids you double it each time you have a kid you double it in there's more love to go around you never halve your love for your ch children which i like that idea and i'm going with that one so my last experience giving birth and i'm talking about this because i've literally just watched it um with Ella, when I gave birth to Ella, it went really, really, really well. I was so lucky. It went really smoothly. Me and Daniel were lying in bed. I was four days overdue. Me and Daniel were lying in bed and I started thinking, oh, interesting. Um, oh, ooh, ooh, sort of things. And then I just started counting it on my own because I, I didn't know exactly what I was looking for or waiting for. I didn't have any plug or my waters didn't break so I, I wasn't I was wasn't thinking I was going into labour but I remember people saying oh you have to count the 
pains and how far and how often you're having them so I was like okay I'll do that but I was on my own and Daniel was snoring next to me and I thought I'm not going to wake him up because this might be nothing and I'll look silly and it this is silly and it didn't really hurt either so I was just sitting there just counting in my head and I thought did that say five minutes so I got my phone out timed it properly I was like oh <laughs> this is like five minutes apart these pains but I don't feel that bad and then like as, as soon as that it was just like <laughs> straight away I was like pain literally like <laughs> and I thought okay gonna have to wake him up now so I nudged him and said Daniel he takes ages to wake up I said Daniel I said okay uh, I think it's happening and as soon as I said that he like got up he was completely wide awake he, he went a bit pale <laughs> he was like panicking he was like who do I call what number do I call so he called the midwife and I had to speak to them on the phone so that they could count how far apart the contractions were coming to determine when I went into hospital so all that happened anyway about this was in the middle of the night so about five o'clock I went into the hospital and I gave birth, I think at about five o'clock the next day, or that day, that daytime, so like only 12 hours. And then we had to stay in there overnight just to make sure everything was okay with Villa. And the actual birthing went really, really well. Like obviously I, I threw up quite a lot when I got there and Daniel was like, I was going, I'm going to be sick. And he was going, no, no, you're not. You're just, I think you're just like giving birth. Like you're not going to be sick you're getting confused and I was like no I feel really sick he was thinking you're not going to why and I was like why would I be sick no one told me that this could happen so anyway I threw up everywhere <laughs> um and then the contractions got worse and worse and eventually it started to be you know go time and we didn't push for long it was pretty much I don't know how many pushes now but very quick it seemed very very quick it seemed to the point where I heard the midwife say you're ready now you can push you're ready now to hear it well seeing her was about, it, it felt like to me was about three minutes I don't know how I don't know whether that's true or not but my mum was in the room um, and she was absolutely brilliant like I've always thought my mum would be very dramatic in these kind of things because that's what I'm like and I just assumed that she'd be a nightmare and she wasn't she I wouldn't have been able to do it without her and I wouldn't have been able to do it without Daniel this time around I'm now potentially thinking of a home birth but I think that will probably change just because the same same as what Billy was saying you, you just never know like I just like the the reassurance of there being hospital doctors and, and midwives around you and everything's clean and everything's you know they know what they're doing and I fully put my myself in their hands before and so and it all went so well last time like why would I d change it I don't know anyway these are things for me to think about not that you'd think about <laughs> hope this time goes exactly the same I don't know if it will but I'm just, I'm wishful thinking. I think I'll have in the room with me Daniel, my mum, and maybe Daniel's mum this time because she didn't get to see it last time. And obviously we're a lot closer now. We've known each other a lot longer and I think it would just be lovely for her to be involved. And I liked the fact, like, on the, in the mummy diaries that Gaynor was fully involved. Like, when you have families, you have to... You've got two families, that's one of the best things about it and having grandkids and stuff. You mix these two families and they might be different but you mix them together and it's and it just works, hopefully. Sometimes it doesn't, I don't know. But with this family, like I absolutely love all of Daniel's family and so I want them to be part of it. So I'm hoping that all goes to plan. Then again, you never know. It could all go, I could have a, I, I might need to have a C-section, I might not be a natural birth. I am open and aware of all of these things. Um, 
that scares me though because I feel like in my head I'm, I'm thinking it's going to be exactly the same and maybe I need to try and backtrack and think this could be completely different I just in my head I'm like it's not it's going to be exactly the same it's going to go exactly the same I'm going to feel exactly the same afterwards and everything's going to be okay <laughs> so yeah I am about what did I say I think 26 weeks 26 weeks I am and um, I am feeling really good so I've had all my sickness that stopped at about 16 weeks um, I thought it was never going to stop and all of a sudden one day it just stopped I still get sick in the car I car sick really really bad I get it anyway but when you're pregnant I get it a lot worse um, and so I, I'm, I'm kind of this week being a bit crazy, like I'm turning into a bit of a freak, like I've booked so many things in, like I just looked outside my garden and was like, I need the garden done. And I ha we ha me and Daniel have been speaking about it, but it's like when you speak about it and then you just think, yeah, yeah, we'll do that one day. I've booked it in, it's happening Wednesday, they're coming to do my garden. Um, I have, we've been talking about getting a TV in the bedroom, I've got a TV, I went I'm like nesting, what is what they say. I went and got, I'm nesting for myself, not the baby yet. I'm actually just going to show you the garden, what it is now. So we're keeping the palm tree, we're going to put all artificial grass for the kids. And then a bit of deck in here. So you'll see the before and after that. Oh, there, there's my dad! <laughs> I didn't even know my dad was here, guys. That's crazy. Also, um, you will not believe, two of my best friends slash cousins, they're actually my cousins, not fake cousins, they all are mums, are sisters, um, and two of my best friends are getting married a month apart. One's getting married in July, one's getting married in August. So, me, Miss Pre Heavily Pregnant, is going to have to plan two Hindus, um, one of which I will not have a baby anymore, so that won't be as crazy. I can potentially, you know, let my hair down a bit. One of which I'm going to be literally, my due date is the week before her wedding. So, let's hope I even make it there. But I'm planning two Hindus. So I have two groups on um, WhatsApp, trying not to speak about the other one in the other group trying to keep everything secret, trying to keep them very different but as good as each other because I don't want anyone to think I favour anybody else, you know? I mean, it's all well and good getting married very close together but you don't think about the people that have to make two Hindus like me. Didn't think about that, did you, Kira, Sarah? It is impossible to make a Hindu different. Like, you can only buy a certain amount of stuff like the sashes and the whatevers, okay? Neither of you like willies, so I can't do anything fun willified. I just don't know what to do. Any ideas, guys? Comment below. We'll let, we'll keep trying to keep it a secret, though. But to be honest, it's not going well, because it's impossible. It's, it's honestly impossible. But, alas... I will try my hardest for you ladies. You made my Hindu very, very special. Um, and I cannot wait to see you both, hopefully, <laughs> walk down the aisle and marry. Yay! So this is going to be my new thing, the spinning thing. Love it.